Hey there YouTube. Welcome to this new tutorial called Learn Python from Beginner to Advanced. In this tutorial, we are going to be talking about what is Python, installing Python, ID or interactive development environments and code editors for Python development, strings, tuples, lists and other data structures in Python, functions and a lot more. So fasten your seatbelts and let's get started. Python is a popular general purpose programming language that can be used for a wide variety of applications. It includes high level data structures, dynamic typing, dynamic binding, and many more features that make it as useful for complex application development. Is Python open source? Yes. So let's look at who uses Python. Google uses it so much that it has public trainings for Python. Mozilla's Firefox browser has over 230,000 lines of Python code. Microsoft promotes Python using its IDEs like VS Code. Uber uses it to analyze and share data. Netflix provides your suggested movies and applications using Python to implement artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms. Python is such a good tool because it has a huge community support and readily available packages. Python is a cross-platform language. It's a high-level language. It is easy to use. You can implement artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms. You can use it for automation of tasks. Testing of applications can be done using Python. And it is very fast and highly efficient. These are a few of the reasons why Python is such a good tool. Now let's get started with the installation. Simply go to python.org. In here, go to downloads and it will show you the latest version of Python available. Simply click on that to download the GUI installer. Once that is downloaded, simply click on it. Continue, continue and agree to the conditions and continue. And then you can customize you have a list of options that are available and then you can just click on install. I'm not going to do that because I already have Python installed on my system. Another way of installing Python is using PyENV. PyENV provides multiple versions of Python that can be switched on the run. I can simply go to my terminal and say PyENV install the version of Python that I want to install. And then I can do a Python version check, which displays the right version. And if I want to get into the Python interactive environment, I can simply run Python and it will start the interactive environment. Once that happens, you can run any commands that are written in Python. I can do simple arithmetic operations to which the output can be seen in the next line. Now going to your personal development environment. There are two ways in which you can work with Python. You can either get a fancy IDE or an interactive development environment which provides you a lot of different tools through which you can simply run the application, debug the application without any additional configuration. One such ID is PyCharm. You can go to jetbrains.com slash PyCharm and click on download. Here you'll see two versions, the professional edition and the community edition. You can download the community edition if you don't want to purchase the product and it will give you the installer. You don't need to subscribe or anything. Let's just wait for this download to complete. Let's click on that and just drag and drop this PyCharm CE to the application and then just close this. Now let's open PyCharm. We'll start a new project. You can provide the location where you want to create the project. I'll name the project Python tutorial and I'll be using this version of Python. And let's just click on create. When I click on create, it will create the complete folder structure for me. Now let's look at the folder structure for a second. We have a single folder called Python tutorial, which is the base folder. And I have a main.py file. In this main.py file, we can remove all of this. And let's just try out our hello world program. So we'll write print hello world and save this. Now, if I want to run this, I simply go on run and run main. 
it displays hello world. So that means my program is working. Now let's go to VS Code. VS Code, unlike PyCharm, is a code editor. Code editors generally don't have a lot of fancy functionality for running servers for a particular application. Eclipse, PyCharm, RubyMine are all examples of IDEs. Whereas VS Code, Atom, TextMate are all examples of code editors. Now let's go to open and select the project and just click on open and this opens my project. I have the same file print hello world. Now once I have this file, I can just open a new terminal and in order to run this file, we'll type python3 and the name of the file and we can see hello world being displayed in the terminal. So this is how we can run any Python file. So let's just add this print statement here to separate out different sections of our program. Now let's just create this variable called counter equals to zero. Another variable called user equals to the art of coding. Unlike other languages, we don't need to specify what the data type of the variable is going to be because that is done by Python at runtime. We can have an array or lists as they are known in Python friends equals to John, Rick and Harry. Now if I want to declare a decimal, I can simply say rental equals to 14.99. Python is a very intuitive language. Now let's say I want to print something onto the screen. To do that, I can simply use the print function. I can say print type counter. What the type function does is that it returns to us the type or the class that a particular variable belongs to. Let me just duplicate that four times and change this to username, friends and rental. Now when I run this, I'll be able to see the classes of all the four variables that I've declared. Now let's add a print rental and run this program. I'm able to see that it prints variables as mentioned on line two. It declares all the variables and then it is giving me the type of counter username and towards the end it is printing the value of rental. Now if I want to display the value of the variable username, I can simply write print the string username and a comma username. What Python does here is that it joins these two strings and now let's run the script again and we're able to see username the art of coding. Now a very special feature of Python is that we don't need to specify the type of the variable when we are declaring the variable. However, since I've already initialized the variable counter to a zero, I can see that the type of the counter is now an int. To look more deeply into this data type, let's say we have a variable called a equals to zero. Now on the next line, we say a equals to hello. Ideally, this should give us an error. Now on the third line, we say a equals to 14.99 and now we say a equals to true. Now in four lines, we've changed a from an int to a string to a decimal to a boolean. And now if I run this program, I'm able to see that everything is printing. Now let me just add a print statement so that we can print a and see if it's actually working. And yes, it prints true. Now let's create a new file called introduction.py where we are going to be writing the next part of our code. There are two types of variables in Python, mutable and immutable. Mutable simply means we can change the value of a variable once we have created it. And immutable simply means that we cannot change the value of a variable once we have created it. Let's declare a variable called temp equals to 50. and then print id temp. The number that you see here is the location in memory where this variable is being stored. Now let me change this temp equals to temp plus one and then print the id. In both the cases, we are seeing a different id. The reason why that is happening is that integer is of type immutable. That is why when we are doing temp equals to temp plus one, what is happening internally 
is that 50 plus 1 is computed and stored in a new memory location, the reference to which is returned and assigned to temp. And that is why we see different IDs. Now let's talk about immutable. Let me just refactor this code a little bit. Make this print immutable and then print mutable. Now let's say temp is an array or a list with the elements 1, 2 and 3. Now we are going to say print id of temp and then we say temp dot pop what this does is that it removes the last element of the array and returns it. Now if I see after this operation the id of temp and print it we see immutable and then two ids and mutable and two same ids now the reason why these two ids are the same is that lists in python are mutable that is why even when we pop an element out of the list the id of temp or the reference of temp still remains the same now let's go to the next topic which is strings strings as we saw can be declared with variable equals to in double quotes or single quotes the art of coding that is the value of the string and if we want to print it we can simply say print and then the name of the variable name let's change this to name equals to and then type equals to and then here we are going to say type and then name Now let's run this program and here we see name equals to the art of coding and type equals to str so that means that this variable is of type string now let's look at a few useful functions for strings to get the length of a string we can simply say print len and then the name of the string If we print that we'll see 17 now let's see how we can access a particular character of a string a particular character in a string just like an element of an array can be accessed using the name of the string and square brackets with the index now when I run it name 0 gives me P now if I want the last character of the string I can simply say minus 1 of name And that gives me an error because of the brackets. So let's remove these extra square brackets and change them to circular brackets and run the program. And we can see G from coding. Once I'm able to access the first and the last, any other character of the string, let's say I want to get a particular subset of the string. To do that, I can simply say print name, the starting index and the ending index. Zero colon 10 starting index colon ending index now if I run this I get the art of now let's look at the permutations that we can have in this method of accessing the substring now let's say I have the starting index and no ending index and in the other one we have starting index as missing and the ending index as 10 Now if I run this, I'm able to see the art of for 0 to 10, coding for 10 to blank and the art of for blank to 10. Another combination that we can have here is name and then colon. Let's assume for a second, I just say name and colon. Now what would be the output of this? The output of this would be the complete string because a missing starting index signifies starting of the string and a missing ending index signifies the ending of the string. Another way of accessing the characters of the string can be name, square bracket, starting index, colon, ending index, colon, the interval. The interval is simply the difference at which the characters should be taken. So 1 to 10, colon 2 
means we start with the character at index 1 up till 10 at an interval of 2. So we have 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9. Now if I run this program, I am able to see H space R space F. And if I change this to 0, I am able to see T E A T O. The T E A T O and that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we are going to be talking about lists, tuples and other data structures that are offered by Python. We're going to be looking at functions and a lot more. So stay tuned. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel and like and share the video as much as you can. Thank you for watching.